So it is currently 4.56 a.m. in the morning. Um, I've just, I've been up since 4.30, just about to do some journaling and get ready to head to the gym. Just starting to record a bit of like a, a day in the life sort of thing, just a bit of a vlog to break, break up the YouTube routine a little bit, show you everything that I'm working on with Millennial Wealth Group and how I structure my day around. So I just also wanted to give you guys an update on how the Discord is going. So it's very much up and running now at the moment. Uh, we actually had our first backtesting Zoom session today, which after this little clip, you're actually going to get to see a little snippet of how that went. I think the hour ran for just under an hour and a half, and we are actually going to be doing two sessions a week. So make sure you're actually entering the Discord now on the early access to make sure that you start actually benefiting from these uh, Zoom sessions straight away. So we've got quite a few members actually in here now. Everyone's getting to know each other. We've got the chats running quite well. We do have the foundations channel as well, just for all of the members that are the real OGs that have actually joined before the full course is completion. <clears throat> I've also started just making some nice little wallpapers for everyone. Um, and we can also kind of see down here, we've got the fundamentals channel now up and running. So thanks Webster for letting everyone know that tomorrow actually is an Australian bank holiday. So we need to keep that in mind when we're trading. Uh, the outlooks are actually still being posted every single day and a lot of members are actually able to capitalize on quite a few winning trades here. Shout out to AJ, he's had a great week on EU. He's actually made quite a few winning trades. So I think this one here, full TP on a confirmation entry that was around 9R and he also had another one on here, 90% at 4R and he left the runner. Um, so both EU and AU traders are doing really well. The other pairs, we're not really focusing too much on them right now. The main focus will be on AU and EU. Um, you'll see later in the backtesting session, we tried to break down EG, so Euro GP, GBP. And shout out to Stitch. I don't think we'll ever be looking at that pair again. It was terrible, but we were still able to make sure that we could make sense of why price was moving in the way it was and to also get some clarity as to the actual entry model that we're looking for. So without further ado, here's a little snippet of how the backtesting session went today. All right, so EG, we'll start off on the weekly. We'll look at where we're reacting from this moment. So looking at this week, we can just come here and drop a horizontal line. But we can also see what we're tapping into is this whole candle, which was engulfed. So why this candle is important is the next candle fully engulfed it. We can also see that the liquidity was taken below here. And what that means is we had this candle trading up. People would, it was enticing buyers to enter. I would have looked at this, which was also a liquidity sweep saying, okay, this is a perfect time to enter the market. Came down, liquidated all their orders before we pushed up. And then we had quite a significant uh, breaker structure here. But we're not going to be marking that out on the weekly. I'm just showing you why this zone is important. So we're currently within this. We can get rid of this horizontal line. We can say that this is a sweep and this was a boss, but we don't need to mark that out on here. <clears throat> Now, in terms of supply, why I wouldn't mark this out as the supply is because it has failed to yet set a lower low. So for the supply to be valid, it would only be valid if this candle was to push further below this candle and have a body close there. Then it would be supply because it's actually created a new lower low on the weekly. Yes, it would be a supply on the daily because this here, that would be a breaker structure on the daily once we go down. But looking at this time frame, because we're starting off on the weekly, we just need to use the same sort of rules, but looking at it in a bigger perspective. So in that sense, if we saw that this here would have been a previous lower high in the sense that this would have been the structure. Once we had this body close below here, then we would have had the break of structure of this. which means that this candle above would have been the supply that caused that. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this would be our weekly range. We get rid of this, get rid of this. Once we know our weekly range, we drop down to the daily. Let me make this full screen. Okay. So for the daily, I'm just going to use the same pip values as AU because I haven't looked at EJ, EG in ages. So if we've got a pullback of greater than 110 pips, which here we have, and then we have that break below, 
Zoom thing's always getting in the way. One sec, guys. Um, then we can mark this out here as our breaker structure on the daily. I'm just going to put it on my other screen. So this here would be our daily boss. Leaving this to be our daily high. And this being our daily low. Um, something I just noticed though, because if we're going to be doing back testing and we're looking at live price, I'm going to obviously have seen this price development. So we need to actually go to replay mode first. Let's go back to like, I don't know, maybe here. So this hadn't happened yet. So at this point, the uh, daily boss would have been, how many pips is this pullback? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we, this would be the daily high. And how many pips is this pullback? Over 110, it's 182 pips. So this would be our daily low. Does everyone understand why I picked these levels? Yep. Yeah. Yep, cool. So that's all we need to do on the daily and we'll jump down to the four hour. Okay, this pullback was only 52 pips. In this leg of price, we haven't seen anything that looks like this, right? Where we consolidated, then had a sweep, then pushed down, right? This would have been a structure point if this pullback was greater than 90 pips and then we push down. But as this sort of consolidation throughout here right, over this five days, it was just a pause in the market because there wasn't much liquidity entered. There weren't a large amount of orders being exchanged in the sense that we didn't actually see any momentum entering the market. So this was sort of one push. This was a pause. This sweep then took all the liquidity resting below these lows to then allow us to push higher. So this here would have been our sweep. Okay. Meaning that this daily break of structure was also a four hour break of structure because this here, this isn't structure. This was only just a pause given that how many, how low pips it was. Um, knowing this pair, I know it's a average daily range is actually less than AU, but I'm just treating this as if it were the same, just so I'm going to be using the same pip values because I'm not hundred percent sure how many pips it needs to move. Um, but therefore this would still be our daily plus four hour break of structure. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. I always have to have these neat because it pisses me off. All right. So knowing that that's our four hour break of structure and this pullback is greater than 90 pips, this is also our four hour low. And drop everyone's favorite tool, the premium and discount, <laughs> and look at different zones, right? So if we look at this push up, it's not really demand because it didn't put in a high higher than this high, but it's still an interaction zone. So we can look at this whole range. When price pushed into here, it pushed up and swept the liquidity above. Then when the actual break of structure occurred, the momentum sort of entered where you see this bearish engulfing, right? So you can see this little guy, which was fully engulfed, which we'd probably have a very aggressive reaction from if we actually tapped it. <clears throat> we can also see that here was a liquidity sweep. When it's such a big POI like this, we can just take the wick. We can see we've almost tapped that now. When we refine it down on the 15 minute, we've probably already tapped the zone, but we'll have a look. <clears throat> and we got this guy as well. And we can actually see this, the sweep, because we aggressively tapped in and tapped straight back out. Everyone following so far? Yeah. Now, this would just be a catalyst for a pullback in the sense that the daily and the four hour are both bearish. 
So we're expecting when price interacts with this level, yes, it will give us a pullback, but that essentially that we will continue falling until we hit this weekly demand. Some other zones that we can mark up here. So we can see these buy to sell weeks. Price interacted with this. Push down, swept all this. Leaving this POI, which was fully engulfed. And it has inducement above in the sense that it wasn't fully mitigated, but this was actually mitigated here. Was it? No, we still missed. Okay. So once we tap here, we will sort of have a reaction because there'll still be resting buy orders that filled this market. So in the sense, when we're coming down, <clears throat> using sell orders to push us down. Once we tap into this liquidity pool, we will have a reaction up. How big will just depend on how many orders are resting here. Considering we had such a big influx of buyers in this bullish engulfing, it's going to be quite a significant pullback, I would say. So mark this up as a catalyst for a pullback. And again, we can see the exact same price action playing out here. This one has actually been mitigated. also swept the liquidity below here after we interacted with this zone, which was actually in premium of the four hour range as well. So looking at this, do you guys think that we have fulfilled our pullback or that we still have room to the upside? You could probably say we've fulfilled it. Cool. I agree. And the way that we'd actually need to see whether or not is once we see these catalysts for a pullback starting to fail, right? So this low would only be classified as a targeted low once we see this first catalyst for a pullback fail and then supply holding. So what I mean by that is now that we've tapped into premium, we've tapped into a liquidity sweep that's also had interaction, which has caused the break of structure. So it's fulfilled the three main objectives that we need for a valid POI. If we see price interacting with this catalyst for a pullback where it is right now, we see it try to push up and then fail. And then ideally we'd see the same sort of scenario playing out here. Then this would be supply because it broke this last demand zone. If this supply then starts holding and we see 15 minute order flow shift. So in the sense that we have a 15 minute shock, then we can say that this low should therefore be targeted because it's failed to put in a high. We've had a four hour POI fail and we've had a 15 minute supply zone halt, and this should fail. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Thank you for watching today's video, guys. And I hope that you were able to take something out of the back testing session. There's lots more nuggets to be found once you join the Discord and watch the rest of the video. Um, and I'm not saying this as a marketing scheme, but I promise you there's only one spot left in the early bird offer, and that will be proven once you join and you see the other 24 spots are taken. So if you do want to join and get that discount, please make sure that you join the waiting list in the description of this video, and I will email you personally today. And all our members now that are currently in the Foundation OGs package, they have all booked in for their one-on-one -on -one sessions, which we've had quite a few already, and members are starting to see some significant change in how they're thinking about trading and everything else moving forward. So please, if you do want to join early and get into that saving, let me know. I have sent emails to everyone on the waiting list. So if you haven't received it, please check your junk mail and let me know in on YouTube or on Discord or on Instagram if you haven't. I'll make sure that you do receive that link just so that you can start getting those benefits today. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in next week's video. Take care.